Do you have unrealistic relationship expectations? Most of us do. This video is going to explore very common ones many of us hold. One of the most common relationship expectations is the belief that others should meet all of my needs. In childhood, where many of these beliefs or expectations were formed, that of course was the case. We were completely dependent on our caregivers to meet all of our needs. As we grow and as we mature, it becomes our responsibility to identify and to meet our needs. Quite honestly, no one else can meet all of our needs at any given time. It is really on us. When we hold our partners up to that expectation to meet all of our needs all of the time, we really create a lot of conflict and suffering in our relationships. Another common relationship expectation is this what I call mind reading or this idea that others even can know what's in our head, know what our needs are, anticipate, and then meet them without us even speaking any words to them at all. A lot of this is based in childhood where we didn't have verbal communication, where it was the job of our caregivers to show up, to have that level of attunement, to be able to figure out what it is that was wrong with us. When we were crying, were we tired? Were we hungry? Were we uncomfortable and did we need a change? There was a sort of mind reading that caregivers needed to do because we couldn't communicate. As we age, no one can be in our heads except ourselves. To hold others up to the idea or the expectation that they can be, again, creates conflict and suffering in many of our relationships. Another common expectation I hear often, a lot of times this is a belief passed on from our families, from our culture, maybe even from media. It's this idea that others or relationships in general, their job is to complete us as if I'm not whole on my own. We are all whole and complete on our own. Relationships add things to our life. They're an enhancement, they're an extra. Of course we all need them, though we are complete and we are whole on our own, especially when we're not in relationships. Another really common expectation surrounds this idea around conflict with many of us avoiding it, thinking that any indication of conflict means that the relationship isn't working, or means that the relationship isn't working, or should be avoided at all costs. Conflict is a natural part of being in a relationship, of being human. We are all different people. We're not always going to agree. So many of us run from conflict. We fear it. We don't feel we have the tools to navigate it. Again, based in things that happen maybe around anger in childhood. Maybe we never saw conflict being resolved in our home or conflict just looks like scary screaming and yelling. Of course you would then want to avoid it. And of course you would then believe that maybe it is a bad thing. And it does mean that the relationship isn't healthy or isn't for us. Again, I assure you, conflict is completely normal. It's not the presence of conflict that's an issue, of course. It's how is conflict navigated. Right? What do I choose to do when I'm in conflict? Another expectation is this idea around attraction or around connection. A lot of us have this belief that being attracted or connected to others, again, is problematic, means the relationship isn't working or should be avoided. We're all different humans. We might find other people attractive. We might be able to connect with different people in different ways. Again, just like with conflict, it's not necessarily the presence of attraction or of connection that's a problem. It's, of course, how is it handled? You and your partner, of course, can determine the boundaries that work for you in terms of acting on your attraction or on your connection. However, believing that being attracted to others is problematic or being connected with others is problematic is just simply unrealistic. It's part of the human experience. It's part of connecting and being in relationship with people that are different. Connections are just as unique as the people involved. Another really, really common relationship expectation that causes many of us suffering is this idea around boredom or the experience of boredom. A lot of us, when we don't feel really passionate or we don't have that roller coaster highs and lows that maybe come with the beginning of a relationship, like the honeymoon period, 
a lot of us take that absence of that or maybe the boredom, just the monotony of daily life with a person to mean that, again, the relationship isn't working or that it shouldn't be avoided. Relationships actually at their core are stable. They provide a stability. They provide a security. They're not unpredictable. So many of us are used to those unpredictable highs and lows again because of our earliest relationships. What we call those is trauma bonds. We seek those. We might leave a partner when we begin to feel bored looking for that next person who we can ride that same roller coaster with. It's unrealistic to feel like you can maintain those highs or those lows all of the time. What we're really looking for in our relationships is stability, not that roller coaster. So how do we begin to do the work? The work begins first when we just witness which of these expectations might you be holding, might you be bringing into your relationship, might you be putting on your partner, and might you be causing yourself conflict or suffering in your relationship. I'd love to hear from you. What is your most common unrealistic expectation that you find present in most of your relationships? Leave it in the comments below.